Amen. Thank the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Are you ready to hear the word tonight? Amen. It's an on-time word from God. Amen. Amen. So if someone will please turn that fan down, please. Hallelujah. So, so my notes don't blow all over the place and so I don't have to run. Well, Pastor... Uh, Thank you for allowing me to preach. It's always an honor and it's a privilege to stand before you to preach the word of God. Amen. This is fresh, hot, off the press. Just got it this afternoon. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So let's just uh, raise our hands towards heaven and, and thank him for his word, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your anointing that is on your word. Let the preaching of the word come forth with wisdom and revelation that the hearts and the minds of the people would receive your revelation for this day, this hour, in Jesus' precious name. And we thank you for it in Jesus precious name and the saints of God said amen. amen all right let's turn to our text Habakkuk where's Habakkuk it's in the Old Testament so Habakkuk chapter 2 in verse 1 when I was reading this I'm like oh Lord I want to preach the verse 3 but he he impressed um, Verse 2, uh, Habakkuk 1, sorry, Habakkuk 2, chapter 1. Thank you, Lord. And when you get there, say amen. Chapter 2. It is chapter 2. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, this is good. Actually, it's verse 1. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Hallelujah. Mighty God. So to stand means to remain, to continue, to abide, and to hold one's ground. We have to stand our ground upon the onslaught of the enemy. Amen? Amen. When the devil tries to throw stuff our way over here and over there, sickness, oh, that'll get him. Depression, oh, that'll get him. We got to stand our ground yes. on the word. Amen. Because Jesus is the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we have to take our stand and against, against the prince of the power of the air, against the, the deception, against the lies that's running rampant in this day, in this hour. This is a hard message. This is a warning message. And the title of this message is Standing on Our Watch. Standing on Our Watch. All right, let's see what else it says. So I will stand upon my watch. So what does watch mean? Is it charge or service? So we have to stand in the place where God has us. Stand in that place of ministry. Amen? Stand in that place of ministry, even if it feels like we're the big toe. What function does the big toe have? I don't know. But physiologically, 
And anatomically, if we don't have, if we have our big toe amputated, our balance is affected. Every member of the body is significant. Paul talked about it through his epistles. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a foot or a hand or a, a head. If we were all heads, how would we go somewhere? Well, if we just, there would be a bunch of heads rolling around. I have a vivid imagination. That's not a pretty picture. So you see, each and every one of us and our ministries and, and our place in the kingdom of God is significant. Don't let the devil tell you, oh, you're this or you're that or you used to be this or that or the other thing. Stand your ground. Stand up to him. Say, devil, I might have been this, but hey, I'm now a child of God. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus, uh, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All this stuff coming against us, all the deception, that's why we need to stand our ground as believers with the the Islam, so-called Islamophobia and the, the humanism that's increasing in our government and that's all I'll say about that maybe unless the Holy Ghost says otherwise so in Ephesians six thirteen, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in that evil day and we're standing in the evil day And having done all, so when you've done all you can do, you stand. You stand on the word of God. You you just say, I'm not going to move. I'm going to continue. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to hold your hand, Jesus, no matter what comes my way. In, In the face of sickness. In the face of frustration, depression, delusion, whatever it is. Hallelujah. I will stand upon my watch. This is about standing our ground. This is about standing in our place that God preordained for us. When he created us, he created a place for us. Amen? But we got to go and, and, and be born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And, and born of the water and of the spirit thank you Jesus this isn't a part of my message but God's just given it hallelujah so will watch means to look about or to watch closely and we'll watch So we have to watch. We have to pay attention to what's going on. We have to pay attention to what's going on in the realm of the spirit. And how many know that the realm of the spirit is two-sided? Right? The realm of the, the Holy Ghost, what the Holy Ghost is doing, how he's speaking, how he's moving, but also our adversary. The devil. Yeah, we know what he's up to. Because the good book book tells us. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. 
okay? He's trying to do that today, this week, as a result of the miracle that occurred on Sunday, the baptism and, and that word that went forth. Yeah, but we're not ignorant of his devices. Mm -mm. Nope. We're not ignorant of his devices. We, we've got his number. Hallelujah. We've got his number. So we have to stand. Amen. We have to stand with the whole armor of God. And to stand. To stay there. So what do we do in the, uh, sometimes in, in the hurricane... In the storms of life, the, the wind's blowing, and it feels like it's going to blow us down, but we have to plant our feet square and stand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you getting anything out of this tonight? Let the Holy Ghost speak to you tonight. Let the Holy Ghost speak to us tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. So Ephesians 1.17 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. He wants us to know what's going on but it's up to us to seek his kingdom to seek his righteousness you know we have to seek the kingdom of god it's not going to be landed we're not going to be sitting there and let it land in our lap no we have to do something hallelujah so the last word that we're going to look at tonight and this could be a a lot a long message but and what I shall answer when I am reproved so look at Revelation 3 and 18 and it reads as many as I love I rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore and repent. Now going back to Habakkuk, that last word means uh, correction, rebuke, or chastisement. In other places in scripture, in Proverbs and Hebrews, we find that if the Lord's chastening you, if he's rebu rebuking you, if he's correcting you, he loves you. He's doing it because he loves us. He's not doing that to destroy us. Amen? Let's shake that thought and kick it out. But the reason that he's correcting us and somebody... Somebody under the sound of my voice has been feeling corrected. And you need to know right now that it's because God loves us. It's not that he wants to grind you into the carpet. No, that's what the devil does. God builds up. He edifies us. Hallelujah. So standing on our watch. Amen? Yeah. We're standing on our watch. We're standing in the place of ministry. We're receiving the chastisement. We're receiving the reproof of God. And we're accepting it. The one thing I'd like to like you all to take home tonight is when you're seeking God and he answers us and with the rebuke sometimes we get so stunned we're like what 
What just happened? What did you say? Could you say that again, Lord? Really? Oh, oh. So when, when we tune our ear, let's have an obedient spirit and to correct those things in our lives that need to be corrected. Not saying it's easy. It's not easy. Change is not easy. But as we delight ourselves in him, he will give us the desires of our hearts. He, see, he changes desires. He's a desire changer. Oh, yeah. As we fall more and more in love with Jesus, he just changes our desires to look and to act more like him empowered by the baptism of the Holy Ghost Amen. hallelujah and now it is my pleasure to bring sister Jasmine I know God has been speaking to her I, I absolutely know he has because she's just been you know <laughs> ready to explode with the message that the Lord gave her she, she told me on Sunday she said, I finally know what you mean when, when you say it's like fire shut up in your bones. And the word of God is just inside of you. And so we are ready to hear what the Lord has given you. Come and preach, sister. Thank you, pastor. I feel like I do this every time and I have to get everything all adjusted. This is the most amazing opportunity I've ever had to just stand back here and to deliver something that God has given me. So thank you so much. It's truly a, such a blessing. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to gather together in your house to, to give this word that you've given to me. God, I just ask you to see me through it and just for you to speak through me and for me to not be in your way at all in any way. Uh, and just open our ears and our hearts to receive what you have to say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so everybody that's been around this church for a minute or two uh, knows kind of what we're about here. Right. So we're kind of about getting out on the first bus. Right. That, <laughs> That twinkling of an eye getting out for the tribulation. Yeah. Soon and very soon. Amen. We also know that there are a few requirements that go along with that. And I'm kind of about the requirements with my spreadsheet. And I've got, if I can intellectualize it, I will. But one of the most important things is one of the most difficult for me to try to wrap my head around. And that was to fall in love with Jesus. But that makes perfect sense, right? For that to be a requirement, if you're gonna get married to somebody, you want to be in love with them. But how do we fall in love with Jesus? It's kind of a funny concept. All of the other qualifications are like spelled out. They're like, you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, you need to have this and do this. And I'm like the kind of person that likes my expectations uh, kind of listed out for me. I'm really good at following instructions. So give me some instructions. <laughs> so I figured there might be something in here. Help me out. Yeah. So to find out how to fall in love, I needed to know what love is. Yeah. So I go to the Bible and I find in 1 John 4 and 8 that God is love. So it's simple as that. Uh, it's funny because I spent the last two years kind of trying to figure out what love is, and it's right there in black and white. God is love. And that love used there is agape love, which is used in 1 Corinthians 13. We'll go there later. Uh, but this intrigued me because I've always heard that love is a mystery, and it's something we can't explain or understand. 
but it's right there that God is love. So maybe it isn't love that's the mystery. Maybe love seems to be a mystery because people tend to look for it outside of God. But that's not where it's at. People ask what love is and your answer is God is love. And they're like, yeah, but what does it look like? Love looks like God. What are the characteristics of love? What are the characteristics of God? (laughs) So lucky for us, there's a nice list. (laughs) So 1 Corinthians 13, turn with me there. (laughs) Say amen when you have it. Okay, so charity here is uh, agape. So, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth it not itself. It is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things. Believeth all things. Hopeth all things. Endureth all things. Charity never faileth. So that seems like a pretty good road map to what love is. But those are the signs of love. But we've learned recently that we shouldn't be seeking after the signs, but the sign giver. So falling in love with Jesus isn't about, is about seeking him above all else. He tells us right up here to seek first the kingdom of God which is basically it. Because in order to really do that, you have to be willing to let some things go. You have to be willing to reorder your priorities. You have to be willing to lay some things down because they just aren't as important. Mm. To fall in love with someone, you need to get to know them. So so how do we get to know people? Uh, It's kind of a combination between talking to them um, and seeing what they do. So what they say and what they do. So what Jesus says, and take a look around at what Jesus does. Evidence all around. We had a couple of testimonies tonight. We're going to have a whole lot of testimonies when everybody gets healed. It's going to be great. To fall in love with someone, you need to spend time with them, talk to them, learn about them and that's the same way that you fall in love with Jesus when you seek him you'll find him so James yeah James 4 and 8 draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you seek him first because he's your priority everything else is going to pass away everything else is so much less important than God than loving God to that so the whole reason that we're alive there would be no other reason for us to be alive because everything else is gonna pass away heaven and earth and the things in the earth and under the earth and everything Jesus is the reason that we're alive So love isn't a mystery because God is love and we have the most amazing opportunity to know him. People before Jesus came, they didn't get to know him. They didn't get to have the relationship with him that we get to have. They had to sacrifice animals to keep themselves safe. But we get to know him because he loves us. We love because he first loved us. We can talk to Jesus and read his word every single day. We can talk to him every single day. And we should. Because how else are we going to get to know him? How else are we going to fall in love with him? We all ask, what is love? I don't have any idea, but it's God. So 
get to know him and get to know love. Real love and not fake love or any kind of brain chemical reaction. <laughs> Wish I would have looked those up. Uh, I know that our priorities can sometimes get all kinds of out of order and I just really feel like we need to spend some time tonight like with Jesus like just reordering and resurrendering and just that's what I feel like we need to do I don't know if we need to do that in our seats or up at the front here but I feel like that's what we need to do so let's do that